Okay. I think we're ready to go. All right. Our next speaker is Dimitrov Angelov from ANS de Leon, and he's going to talk about biphotonic laser chip, a fiction or reality. Just last minute, I have to make some change. Instead of sticking all my time on that, this is the technology. I would like to present it because we did it when I was in Sofia. So it is something that is made in Bulgaria initially. But I decided also to be more close to the thematics and to present also what is really my current interest. This is just part of that. Uh, to go ahead with uh, things that are more close to the conference. But I will have only time to highlight the results, nothing more. So any details on that I'll present, please, uh, we can discuss uh, uh, after the meeting, after outside. Now, so this is, uh, I have not, uh, I have not to present to this picture, everybody of you know it, but just these are the different level I'm interested. So I'm more interested at, at this level, and you here. Uh, that was a little bit the weakness of this conference. Just a very few has been spoken on that. Uh, people generally, I mean, was more interested in this level. So I'll present things that, that limit this level. And my, our main interest is the structure of chromatin, especially the 30 nanometer fiber. When I say structure, I, I mean crystallography and so on, high resolution structure. Uh, I'm interested of histone variants, uh, especially what happened with chromatin, uh, the, 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 the property of the nucleosomes in chromatin when you switch from canonic histones to uh, incorporate histone invariant in states. Uh, very important parasymbology. Uh, I'm interested of DNA remodeling. I, I'll show you a few results on that. Uh, I'm interested of that, but I will say nothing about that. I'm also interested about that, but I will say nothing about that, especially just for information. Uh, I'm interested how transcription factors, and especially pioneer transcription factors like SOX, eventually pool, can invite and bind to the nucleosome. This nucleosome is a very strong barrier. So this is still a mystery. This is still a mystery, so this is also in our interest. And I also present a technology we develop uh, aimed at to replace the formaldehyde, which is not a very good tool uh, for, many for many reasons uh, in cross-linking DNA protein cross-linking. So first, just the outline. So this is the structure of the uh, nucleosome, but with H1. So it was a lot of debate. So if you don't know this structure, it's difficult to make, to construct the higher structure. So it was uh, tens of years of debate. I think Jeff uh, is here and know all this story uh, about the debates. So we did, we did the high resolution structure by two ways, cryo-electron microscopy and crystallography. Uh, this is the structure we got. So this is the highlight. So the most important thing, the lesson for me for that, so this is on that uh, structure because it was the different models, out diet, uh, uh, bridging, and so on models. So in fact, we find uh, really an on that structure. Uh, that is important thing. Uh, we find also that the C-termine of H1 interact with uh, So the, the, importantly, the C-terminal interact with only one linker. This is also very important when you, when you explain the, the fiber, the 30 nanometer or the, fi the condensed fiber. Uh, and the most important lesson for me is uh, uh, related to the, uh, how to explain the dynamic of H1 in vivo, which is dynamical. And here uh, in this structure, it is not dynamic, it's stable. Uh, and what is the what influenced the dynamics? So we did some also, but this of course in vitro dynamic experiment by making different class of uh, 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 construct in the crew electron images. So next, since it's related to H1, I will switch to a histone variant, CMPA, which is centromeric specific histone variant, extremely important because if you have problem with CMPA, you you stop at mitosis, so it will be not more. I mean, uh, 
the side division will stop here. And the uh, paper has shown by crystallography that uh, the nucleosome, the same CMPI nucleosome, is uh, more open. The extremity are not very closely associated with the core histones. Uh, but uh, this is Japanese people. American uh, people of Central American people doubt of that. And they say this is crystallographic artifact. This is not true. Uh, our studies show that uh, they are closet. So we wanted to do solution structure to look at solution. And clearly from microscopy is a solution structure. Uh, in fact, also we find that they are more open. This is a, a normal uh, nucleosome. This is simple nucleosome. And when you mutate this, this is the difference with alpha and loop, we restore the closing. So a few amino sites here in the alpha and loop determine this opening. So this is also very important. So what we did after to see whether there is physiological relevance. Uh, so what we say, structure function relationship. That why we, we did uh, okay first af okay after that we confirmed that by tap tap pull down. So isolated nucleosomes and, uh, and by proteomics identify the complexes, uh, the protein that associate with this nucleosome, and which we see the H1 associated with convenient conventional nucleosomes, but when but not in CMP nucleosome, they are absent. So H1 does not bind to them, uh, to this nucleosome, because they are more open. And when you mutate uh, this alpha and loop, they are bound. So this is the same as confirmed in vitro. If you see the same sum, this is the binding of H1 by titration. You see, we go to the upper band to the lower band by titrating H1. And in CMP nucleosome, you see the binding is low, it is, is not good. So now uh, this is also confirmed by Western blotting. Uh, so what is the consequence? Because this is very good uh, in vitro effects, but what is the consequence? So the consequence is uh, we did that this is prominent in, two, in, uh, in CRNA treated cells. So we killed the endogenous CMPA, but since the, uh, there is no, uh, the cell cannot survive or difficulty to survive, we replace it by, by the mutated one. So this is... Uh, uh, elementary procedure in cells, but we did it also in uh, in transgenic mice with uh, conditional knockout knocking by exchanging. This is the correct experiment, really the, the biological experiment. By exchange the CMPA with mutated CMPA. So what happens? He is able to go to the centromeres, uh, uh, so the uh, the localization is preserved but you have a lot of mitotic defects. This means that just, just mutating few minocytes, you kill the cell. The cell cannot go through, uh, cannot stop cycling. That is the importance, extremely good example of importance of relation between structure and function. You make a very little change, you make a small change in the structure, uh, and after that is the death. So after we switch to <laughs> I will not go uh, too much uh, with this person. This is Aaron Krug that spent uh, a, a lot of years to solve the 30 nanometer fiber, uh, I mean, um, fiber uh, structure. Uh, he didn't succeed. One of his uh, followers, uh, they, uh, uh, Richmond, uh, in Zurich, he, he was able to crystallize the core particles. So all of this structure that you show here, the core particles, is uh, his former postdoc, uh, uh, Timothy Richmond. But here he commands the structure that uh, Timothy Richmond published in Nature some years ago. And of course, very ironically, because this, this uh, Nature paper with a structure, science paper with a structure, is without H1. So he said the structure of the fiber without H1 is no structure. Uh, and the second thing he said is very difficult and technical, but he's, he said here, that the structure of the chromatin you have to believe. So I like this, you have to believe. But since I'm a scientist, I, I believe only on, on my results and nothing more. So that's why we wanted to go ahead and to, and to do the structure. So we did it after eight years of effort. So we did the, the 30 nanometer fiber structure in six months with H1. Uh, this is the crystallographic. Uh, 
with a 9.5 angstrom resolution. And uh, astonishing, uh, it was very astonished for us to see that it is, uh, you know, it's parallel ribbon. Uh, it's, uh, it's not super coiled, but it's parallel. It does not look like the structure of uh, uh, 30 nanometer fiber, although the diameter is 30 nanometer. So I'm not going to details, but we wanted to check that. It's very difficult to do 3D reconstitution of cryo electron microscopy, but we did some imagery and we select some class. In fact, it is very magnesium dependent, cell dependent. This has been uh, uh, with H1, but at 100 millimolar cell, <coughs> this structure. Um, and when you start rising the magnesium, at 0.35 millimolar uh, divalent ions, we have a mix of two structures. One is flat, as the crystal, and the other one is, uh, uh, is uh, super coiled, you know, it's uh, condensated. And when you go to 0.6, you have this, uh, uh, essentially, uh, the condensated structure. You see here the classes, essentially. You have still some uh, flat, but uh, but the problem is that at this concentration we are working, uh, they precipitate above 0 0.6. It means above 0 0.6, uh, at, uh, we are at micrograms, microliter concentration, uh, you associate nucleosome, uh, fiber, fiber association, and uh, of course you cannot do crystals or uh, other studies because they make kind of aggregates. Uh, so the lesson here is that, uh, ah, another problem, an another very interesting finding. This is like binary fast transition. You don't see intermediate structure. We see flat, parallel, almost parallel. I mean, they are not parallel, but flat. And once we switch, once we switch to, uh, to the magnesium to the high concentrations, uh, we go to this structure in a binary way. There is no, uh, there is no, I mean, the, the, the transition is sharp. You have a very sharp transition from flat to super coiled structure. So this is also very important. So all these data are important when you consider uh, doing uh, uh, reconstruct, trying to reconstruct the, uh, the organization in the nuclei because without knowing the structure, we can do nothing, only, only curtains. So we should know the structure in order to, to, to go ahead and do something better, I mean, strictly scientifically, not, not uh, telling the good stories, uh, and real models. We need these structures. And the lesson is that salt is in extremely important. Salt play a concentration extremely important role. And you may, have, uh, you, ca you may have such kind of switch. So you may have regions, if you have lower salt, that uh, chromatin will have a more flat structure. Uh, when you rise the salt region with higher salt, you can go to the, uh, the supercoiled form. So this is the lattice. I, I, I don't want to say that this lattice is physiologically relevant because this is crystallographic lattice. But some people use, uh, speculate to use the lattice in order to say, okay, they interact uh, in the way that you have in the crystal. Uh, this is very risky to say that, so I just show you the lattice, but... Uh, uh, I will not say that this, uh, is, this is something in common uh, with the reality uh, outside of the crystallographic alignment. So about uh, remodelers, uh, if you see one of the previous speakers, they show this function of the remodeler for sliding nucleosomes and for histone exchange. Histone exchange usually is done uh, by adding to the remodeler some components that are uh, histone chaperones or others. So this is not, <laughs> this is flexible, I mean, flexible remodelers are, I mean, uh, association of uh, about many proteins, for example, 15, and they could be dynamics. So they can recruit a protein into the complex, and this can also change the function. Uh, this is just the core is the motor. But the most important thing is, uh, what we address this question, uh, first it was addressed by Robert Conwer and Kingston in the past, and they call alternate nucleosomes. Is it able, is it able uh, to, to, to obtain such kind of alternate nucleosome? 
but uh, by using combination of different methods, you are able to show that this alternate nucleosome exists, really exists. And they could play an important role in, uh, in, in global chromium flu fluidity. Also, I think they play a role in RNA, uh, uh, in small RNA uh, intergenic transcription. You see the chromatin, you should see that something that uh, is breathing, and the remodelers, by diffusing, not by recruiting, by diffusing simply, binding can binding, they can make uh, such kind of stochati I mean, stochastic sex, partial access to the nucleosome, and perturbing the, the, the structure of the nucleosome. Don't forget the main barrier is the nucleosome, by higher, higher barrier than the chromatin itself. Uh, this is how uh, molecular dynamics, how these uh, loops looks, remodeling induced loops. So now I will go to the final part very quickly. So many years ago, when I was in Safia, we developed with physicists, especially with Stefan uh, Dimitrov, a techniques because biologists were not happy with the formaldehyde. Formaldehyde chip has been introduced by Warshawski when he left <coughs> Soviet Union and go to MIT. Uh, among the first papers was a seven um, PNS paper when he firstly used it formaldehyde for for uh, immunoprecipitation. And he say very well in the paper, be careful, this is extremely powerful protein-protein cross-linking, uh, relatively poor DNA protein cross linker So be careful on your results. So in fact, uh, uh, I mean, I will go quickly through the mechanism. The mechanism is bifotonic chemistry. So when, when we use, replace the formal heat by U, a powerful UV laser, we, we at high intensity, we can ionize the nucleotide, and, and we switch from excited state chemistry, which uh, make a very little DNA protein crossing, essentially pyrimidine dimers, to uh, radical cation chemistry, so we change completely the chemistry, and this is very reactive and form protein DNA crossing efficiently. So we, we use that. Uh, uh, and I, I, here I just illustrate the advantage. If you see formaldehyde, uh, for example, the, uh, the association of many transcription factors in, in one place, it is not sure they interact with DNA or with your DNA target. They can interact uh, first at all, not interact with DNA, all interact uh, through the, the bridge of several uh, formaldehyde crossing. So you can pull down a fragment of DNA that are far away. So this is used in 3C. Shortly, one thing is true, uh, either 3C or, uh, or, or formaldehyde chip, because here you analyze in your sequence DNA fragments that are not uh, targets of this. And they pull down. Just one example. It was shown, one of the morning show, P300 uh, pull down uh, chip. But P300 is not DNA binding. This is stone acetyl transferase. So you cannot cross-link it. So it is cross-linked at a distance as a part of a complex. But who of this protein you cross-link and know is formaldehyde, you have no idea. Uh, without going into details uh, to convince you that uh, by gradient centrifugation of uh, heavily formaldehyde crossing, you can insufficiently, even, even if you reduce the cross-linking with formaldehyde, your waste or DNA fragment carry multi-protein complexes. They cross-link first, after that came to the DNA. So the problem is that you don't know what, what you are analyzing. You are analyzing some proximity, which is not defined, but it is not interaction with DNA. So to convince me finally how they look the, the cross-link from SDR gel, and they are bifotonic, you see the quantum yield. Uh, just one example that uh, we did with androgen receptor. We, we look the size cycle dependence of the androgen receptor binding, let's say, to one target gene here. And we did with formaldehyde and with the laser. And we see that he binds to DNA only in G1 max, but not in G2 max. In G2 max, he doesn't bind. But if you look with formaldehyde, he also binds. He also binds here. So it means that uh, these are artifacts, nothing more. And 
this is the port two. And you see that only here you have this is the gene that is uh, dependent on androgen receptor. You have only here the port two. So now, uh, what is the utility of that? We address the question, what is the repressor? Uh, because androgen receptor is, by, is present all the time. It you know, is not cycle specific. But uh, uh, what's the problem? So we find by other proteomics, we find the, the anchor, which is the repressor, a repressor that says it goes specifically repress the action of androgen receptor and prevent his binding to the, uh, to the DNA, his target sequence. If you do that with formula the heat, you can you couldn't do that, or you can say it's a target uh, cell sequence independent. So you see the, the uh, another story, I'll, I'll strip it. Since I was in the wavelength of comparing formaldehyde with a chip, recently German colleagues make a very nice experiment. And comparing formaldehyde the laser. So they use our technology for laser processing. And now you see first here, uh, so, so this is the overlap of the two methods, the, the peak. This for transcription repressor BCL4. So they map genome white, BCL4, uh, BCL6 uh, on uh, DLB cell, uh, cells. So you see in the case of laser chip, this is the consensus sequence, the dark, and this is the no consensus. So the error, the, the binding, the peaks corresponding to no binding sites, uh, no canonic binding sites, are relatively not, not so much in the laser. But you see in the formal heat, the majority of the bindings are not on uh, canonic binding sites. So, so it means they are artifacts. They are not bound to DNA. So I go further. So this is the, you can compare the, the width of the uh, distribution. Uh, this is examples when they coincide. This is a promoter region. This is example that does not coincide at all. Uh, so you see, this is a UV laser chip. This is a formaldehyde. Uh, you tell me to which one you believe. <laughs> I'll tell me that I believe on that, but not on that. And this is uh, uh, heterochromatin uh, regions. Since it is repressor, it's logically to find it here also, uh, because he could participate in heterochromatinization. And we see a lot of binding sites. All the black boxes are uh, consensus sequences, uh, target sequences, in the heterochromatin, and, and, and no one formally hit uh, chipped uh, peak. So it's just, uh, <laughs> I, I won't like to kill the formal hit, but I say this is really, uh, to be optimistic, 80% of the data that are published for transcription factors in formal hit are. Uh, Artifact has interpretation because these are not interaction, DNA protein interaction specifically. These are uh, fish that have been kind of uh, uh, recruited, uh, crossing in through bridges, factors that are around DNA. So, you, to convince you, see uh, regions uh, uh, that have a lot of formaldehyde, peaks, plenty, but no one. And they are mostly no concession sequences, and no one, and no one in the laser uh, chip. So this is, uh, I mean, uh, uh, this is also many different uh, examples of uh, uh, eochromatin uh, bound uh, BCL6, and no one uh, in formal liquid uh, cross-linking. So, uh, so in my title, I, 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 I say a fiction. Why uh, or reality? Uh, there is some people that try, of course, we are not the only one, that try to, to use this technology. Uh, one is uh, Webwatt. Uh, probably you know him. It's, uh, he, he introduced the first time the biphotonic microscope. He saw that there is good fluorescence physicist, laser physicist. We use femtosecond laser. I don't know why femtosecond laser. It's kind of go, uh, going to hunting birds with Patriot missiles. But OK, because they have femtosecond laser, they want to put uh, a lot of money in that. Uh, could be the reason. We, we, uh, uh, nanosecond laser are good enough. Uh, the, this is the two gels. Uh, first, my interpretation why they did not work, 
they say you have the same, uh, the same yield by lamp and by laser irradiation. So there is no bifotonic effect. But just people that are biologists, if they look to this SDS gel, this, this I don't know what that it does not enter in the gel. This is just in the interface between static and running gel. So you cannot publish the, uh, such things. It's impossible. If I may uh, uh, interrupt you very quickly, your another, conclusions. Another, prob another story was uh, uh, of... Uh, I, excuse me. Excuse uh, me. We really have to move on. So uh, we will stop here. Yes. Well, I'm afraid we don't have any time for questions. So can Yana, can you come and please get set up?